Hello, Mario here. This is the second video of a three-part video series on how to animate with Adobe Animate Pro. Now this is the toughest part of animation. Animating. Wait, you're saying that the toughest part of animating, of the whole process of animating, is animating? I don't understand. <laughs> well, Animating is tough. The actual form of animating frame by frame is the hardest part. It's the part that needs the most amount of time and the most amount of practice. This is going to be the toughest part. But we'll show you some ways to learn how to do it and try it. So remember, our video or our project is going to have three parts. It's going to have a background. It's going to have frame by frame and edit frame by frame animation which is what we're talking about today. And it's going to have motion animation where we drag things across the screen or spin things. So this is the second part, which is about animating. I hope you like it. So in this video, we're going to be talking about animating. And we're going to be talking about animating two different ways. One is frame by frame drawn animation. That's the toughest, but it's fun to give it a try and it's fun to learn. The second way is using a rig, which is like a puppet, and we actually pose the puppet frame by frame. Okay, and I'll show both of those and you'll be welcome to try either or both. It's fun to try both sometimes. Now, there is something we have to think about. There's tricks to learning th new things. Keep it simple especially in animation because you have to draw these you know 50 times so you're going to want to keep that drawing simple otherwise it's going to be very tough to draw 50 times okay even if you're going to use the puppet aspect or the rig aspect you're going to want to keep that drawing simple or that shape simple so that it's easier to pose that puppet okay so keep it simple the other thing you're going to want to remember is that you are learning this. So be a little easy on yourself. Let yourself learn. Try, make mistakes, learn. You know how I think, right? So keep it simple and allow yourself to try it. See how it turns out. Sometimes it turns out really bad. And I find when that happens to me, sometimes I just laugh about it going, whew, that was really bad. And sometimes I surprise myself and say, wow, that turned out really great. Wherever it lands, just allow yourself to enjoy it and know that this is your first time trying it and that it's not going to be perfect the first time. So try, make mistakes, learn. So here's our plan for today. First, I'm going to cover some tips to help you remember what we're going to do today and some key features to remember when you are animating. Then we'll actually talk about animation itself. What are some of these principles about animation? Why do these principles matter? Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about pose to pose, a little bit about weight, and how we show that. Then once we kind of understand where we're going to approach this, then we're going to actually try it inside the software. And in there, you're going to have to understand how to use the timeline, which is, you know, how it plays back. We'll also have to know how to work with frames because we're going to be drawing on separate frames, which gives the illusion of animation or the illusion of life is what sometimes they call it. Books even refer to it as that. We're going to use a tool called onion skins, and that's where, where you draw a pose, draw another pose, and then you're going to draw an, a pose in between those two to make it look like it's actually moving. But in order to draw that in between pose, we need to see both of these poses to draw in between it. It's kind of tricky and kind of abstract. What is he talking about? Onion skins in between poses. You'll see onion skins are super handy. It's a good tool to use it and you'll appreciate it. Then we'll actually talk a bit about the tool itself or some of the tools like the paintbrush. And we'll actually show drawing some key poses and in between those key poses. That way it looks like motion. It looks like these drawings are coming to life. It's really exciting, especially when you know this approach. It makes it a little easier. It's still tough, but that helps us along and we'll take everything we can to make to help us along. 
And the last part we're going to sneak into this video is how, how to animate a rigged character. So we're going to make a very simplistic puppet and then we're going to actually animate that puppet. So here's our tips to help us along. First, keep it simple. If you're making a puppet, make the puppet an abstract gobbly goop or something, you know, something that you can animate, something that's cool, but not overly complex. If you're going to draw frame by frame, if you're going to animate frame by frame, then uh, again, you're going to want to keep it simple. Save often. You never know when something's going to go wrong or when you lose power, or when your computer crashes, when the software crashes, whatever. Save often so you don't lose your work. Now here's kind of an, another abstract thing. When we're drawing frame by frame, we actually have to make an empty drawing and then draw on that empty drawing. Okay, you don't just randomly start drawing. You actually have to decide where and when you're going to draw, make an empty drawing, and then draw in that empty drawing. And you'll see me use this a lot. And that hotkey is F7. So and again, now it's a little abstract, but you will remember this tip because you're going to use it a lot. Every time you draw a new animated frame, you need an empty drawing to draw on it. Okay, remember your animation principles. Pose to pose, what's a breakdown? Okay, pose to, what's pose to pose? Okay, we're going to cover these, but you're going to use these. These will help you along. Okay, pose to pose we'll cover, breakdowns we're going to cover, and in-betweens we're going to cover. And when you are drawing these, think about weight and volume. This is tough, tough stuff. Weight and volume takes huge amounts of practice. Okay, but it's nice to kind of have it, tuck it in the back of your brain and think, you know, if, if this character really was standing there, where's the weight? Try it. Okay. So just think about it. It won't make a huge difference if you get it wrong when you're first learning. As you get a, to be a better animator, it's critical. It's super important. But it's nice to think about these things. Okay. To see a, a drawing longer, so if you want to see a background for, say, 50 frames, you're going to want to hold that drawing. That's what we call a hold. Okay. And this is another hotkey I'm going to give you, F5. F5 will let you show a drawing for longer. And you're going to see me make the background hold longer. And you're also sometimes going to see me hold animated frames longer. Okay, keep it simple, save often, make blank drawing uh, frames before you draw them. Think about the animation principles, pose to pose, breakdown in betweens. Think about weight and volume. Okay, weight and volume again, they're to think about the animation principles you're really going to want to follow those ones those are a little bit more will help you along and then holding drawings for a long amount of time like your background if you want to hold it for the whole thing you go to the very end and hit f5 and it'll show you the background and you'll see me do that so these are the tips you're going to want to refer back to these anyway. I'll, I'll refer back to them at the end of the video anyway. So you can, you, and at that time, you're going to like, right, now I understand what that craziness is all about. All right. Now let's talk about anime. When making a sandwich. What's wrong with my slides? When making a sandwich, what do you grab first? Bread? Why? Think of this in animation terms. Bread is usually the first thing we grab when we make a sandwich. They're the two ends of our sandwich. Well, in, when we're animating, we actually think of the two ends first. Same way. Okay? Let's say this is... I'm your character. This here is our background. And this was going to be an animated scene. Well, our first pose is me teaching. Pose one, right? Second pose is over here teaching. Okay, pose one, pose two. Well, I don't, there, I can't remember what the pose was. Okay, so how do I get from here to here? Okay, those are the two poses. 
So we would actually draw this pose first, then we'd go all the way over here and draw this pose next, and then we'd figure out this in-between part. So think about animating and think about a sandwich. The two bread, the two ends, the two bread are at the end of the sandwich, and the two poses are at the end of that action. Okay? Nice slide. I didn't know that was coming. <laughs> okay, so let's see what else that slide likes to tell us. It says, when making a sandwich, what do you grab second? Well, let's say it's a ham sandwich. Oh, okay. Well, how could it be a ham sandwich without ham? So, the thing that's right in the middle of our sandwich is ham. When we're animating, we have the two breads, the two poses, right? In the middle, this is what we call a breakdown. This tells us what the action is. So how did I get from here, from pose one to pose two? Okay. How did I get there? How did I get between? Well, I could have done this, running. I could have done this, jumping. I could have done this, walking. Okay. That's a really bad walking pose. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that's why I don't act. Um, so pose to pose animating are the two poses on the end. Our breakdown is the action in the middle. It's the ham in the ham sandwich. And then to bring these drawings to life, or to make our sandwich taste better, right? To add our, make our sandwich taste better, better. Oh my gosh! To make our sandwich taste better, we add ketchup, or we add mustard, we add butter, whatever, or all of it. To make our animation look more real or more smooth, we in between. So pose to pose, breakdown in-betweens, right? Pose to pose are the two poses at the end. Breakdown is the action, it's the middle. And then we add more drawings in between so it's smoother. And that's how we're gonna do our frame by frame drawn animation. And in fact, when you see me animate a puppet, I actually do the same thing as well. Okay, so this is a very common practice when animating. Hope you enjoy your sandwich. Okay, so now we're actually looking at the interface and we're going to start refreshing our memory on what a layer is, what the playhead is, and what are those onion skins? We haven't talked about those yet. And frames. But most important, let's understand what a hold means. You might hear me say, I'm going to have this hold longer. Now, in our layers here, we have a background layer at the bottom, okay? We have another couple layers up here, and it looks like we have an animation layer up here. Okay, but those are the different layers that I'm, con I'm using in this particular example. Now, along this back here, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of frames being pointed to over there. So each one of these little boxes is a different frame. Okay, and you can even see frame number. This is frame number five. Okay, and you can see way over here is frame number 10. You can see the number 10 above it. So these are all frames. Now you'll see that background. We're actually seeing that background all the way across the frame. Looks like it's frame 22, maybe 23. So the background's gonna be, you're gonna be seeing the background for 23 frames. That's how long we're gonna be seeing that background. Okay, so you, what a hold is, is it just shows a particular drawing longer. Okay, so you'll, you'll hear me refer to frames and those are these little boxes and you'll actually be, as I start working with frames, it'll actually make sense. Okay, the hold is just holding a drawing so it's on screen longer. And just remember where that onion skin button is. I will refer to it as I'm working. So here we are looking at another example and this time you're actually seeing multiple drawings. You see how there's a dot, a black dot in all the different frames? Those are all animated frames. Okay, so in this case, I only have one layer. It's my animation layer because I could tell because there's animated frames. So each one of those black dots, the circle dots, are different drawings. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about the paintbrush because we are going to use the paintbrush. So you can see the icon right there. 
Okay, and after I select that paintbrush, I actually select the size or the width of that paintbrush. So it's not this big, thick paintbrush <laughs> painting whole walls, right? So we set the width to one because we want it sketchy like a pencil. And we set the smoothing, how clean those li lines are going to look. We set that all the way up. Okay, in this case, it's all the way up to 100. So size is one, smoothing is all the way up to 100. As you become a better artist or, or as a better animator, you start to bring that number down. But it takes a lot of practice to get to that. So let's take the easy route, let's learn this thing. Set the size to one, set the smoothing to all the way up to 100. Okay, so let's do a little trial here. Try and do some frame by frame animation. So you see I have some kind of a tabletop type thing here. Not sure. You can see it does go off the stage a bit, and that's okay. We actually want it to do that. Okay, so I'm going to draw up on this stage, but this is a really small area to draw in. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. You could zoom under view, zoom in. You could see control plus equals or control minus. Control equals or control minus is what I use to zoom in. So if I control plus or control equals, zooms in, control minus. And then we could use our hand spacebar, hold the spacebar down and move the mouse and that moves the stage around. So this is where I'm going to draw. You'll also see that I have a background layer and I have an animation layer. So I'm going to, I already have something in my background layer, this weird looking table. And let's go with this animation layer. I, I chose black. I chose my paintbrush. Remember what we said earlier? We're going to set the size to one. All right, so I'm under tools, property. Set the size to one. Set the smoothing all the way up to 100. So I'm going to click on frame one on the animation layer. And I'm going to draw my first animated frame, our first pose. Okay, and it's going to be rough. We want it to be rough. So let's say, say I'm going to use a can. I'm going to animate a can. Okay, and you can see a lot of these lines are exploratory. It's also because my drawing pad is in a weird spot. <laughs> there we go. But it gives us our first pose. You know, this stuff down here is not ideal, but we're going to live with it. We'll make it work. Okay. Usually in animation, we'd go through a cleanup process and clean these up after. So that's my first pose. So let's do our second pose. What's going to happen? Let's say this, this can is going to jump. But before it jumps, we're going to get it to lean back first. Lean back and then jump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new drawing on frame 10. Okay, so I'm going to right click that frame on my animation layer and we're going to add a blank keyframe. F7. See the hot key? So now I have my first pose and there's going to be my second pose. But wait, our background disappeared. What happened? Well, it's because our background is only showing for frame one. We want it to show all the way up to, let's say, frame 50. So if we want the background to show to frame 50, click on frame 50 of the background. And we're going to insert frame F5. So now the background shows for the whole thing. So if I wanted to go to 55, I go on the background layer, click on the 55 frame, or 55th frame, hit F5. Okay, so F5 extends our drawing. All right, so let's go back to animating. So I have my first pose. Let's put a second pose here. Now, I could see my first pose, but as soon as I go to my 10th frame, I no longer see it. So how am I supposed to draw it again in a new pose without the reference of my old? 
Okay, because I want to see that old drawing when I'm drawing my new drawing. So that's when we use this onion skin. When I turn that on, it gives me like a gray version, a light version of that old drawing, which is exactly what I want. So now when I'm ready to draw on frame 10, I can see the old one. So I can guess, okay, well, if it's going to roll back, let's say it's going to be about here. Okay. So let's say that's the top of it. And, but I want the base to be in the same spot. So that's where the can will be bending. Okay, and the bottom will be exactly the same. And, and animating does take these rough drawings first. This is where we find and refine our motion. And you'll see, even though my, my drawing is hideous and sketchy, you'll see that the, the motion will still come to life. Okay, so there's my pose to pose. So I drew where it's going to start and where it's going to end. And now we want to draw halfway between. But let's say I don't want it to move right away. Let's say I want this first pose to hold for a second or hold for a little bit of time and then start animating. So let's say on frame five is when we're going to start the actual movement. So I'm going to make a hold kind of like I did with this background for five frames. So I'm going to add my new drawing on frame five. And this is just so that it, we're going to convert it to a keyframe. This is just so it looks the same for the first part of the animation. So it kind of stays still for a beginning. Now it's going to start moving. All right, so let's draw halfway between the two. So I'm going to add a new blank frame in between these two, and I'm going to draw halfway between these two drawings. So I'm going to add a blank keyframe. And now I could draw halfway between those two poses. So now, you can see with the onion skins, you can see all three drawings, but when I turn it off, you're going to get a feel for how this is bending back. And it's losing volume, but that's part of the practice. Okay. Now, if you notice, I have three holds, three frames for this drawing, and only two here. And really, we want this to be a little bit more smooth. If I hit play back right now, it's going to be kind of fast. So I'm going to get this to repeat while I play back. So I turn my repeat on. And I'm going to hit play. And it's really fast. Okay, so I want to slow it down a bit. So I'm going to add some frames in here. So I clicked it in the middle here. F5, F5. And in this one, I'm going to do F5 as well. That way, they both have four frames. And what this is going to allow us to do, at first, it's going to slow it down. And next, it will make it more smooth because we can put another drawing in here. So let's, let's do a drawing. Let's turn my onion skins back on. And I want to do a drawing between this pose and this pose. We're going to, or sorry between this drawing and this drawing. We're going to put an in-between to make it smoother. So insert a blank frame again, F7. And we're going to draw between those two drawings. So let's see what that looks like. So now you'll start to see it's going to be a little bit more smoother. It's getting there. Let's do another one right here. So again, we're going to draw between these two drawings. And we're going to draw between those two. Add a blank one, F7. 
and we're going to draw between those two. And this is why we have cleanup artists, because as we're, def as we're finding that perfect pose for the motion, it's very um, experimental. You know, you're kind of just finding where the best place to put the, that drawing. And you can see, even though it's scribbly, you can start to see that it's starting to make sense. Now let's get it to hold at the end. Because right now it's very quick, but it's starting to come to life. So let's hold this for until frame 20. So let's hold this last drawing. So I'm going to go on frame 20 and hit F5. So that way it'll hold it a little longer at the end. See that? It's a little easier to watch, right? And you can start to see that it, even though it's all scribbly and crappy, it's coming to life. Okay. So let's have it go down a little bit more. Let's add another drawing just to have it bend a little bit more. So now it's really stretching because it's way up there. So that's building up the energy before the launch. Now we're going to get it to actually jump. So right before it actually leaves the ground, our next drawing is actually going to be it flinging from this position up to a position where it's going to launch off the ground. So it's just before it leaves the ground. So we can see the bottom of the, of the can here. And we're going to tip the can up a bit, right? So the base is going to be this way, right? And that means that the can is going to be this way. Okay, so it's gonna it's gonna launch. So it's going to bend back, building energy, bink, and it's going to take off. See that? Bink. <laughs> Sound effects are very important. All right, so where would it be next? Well, since it's moving fast, if you notice, I was drawing very close together before. These drawings are really close together. But when things move fast, we, we really put them far, far apart. So my next drawing, I skip one. You notice I'm always skipping one? I'm going to skip one. And this next one's going to be way over here because it's moving so fast. So let's put a blank drawing. And this one's going to be like way over here. It's It's got a lot of energy that it's taken off. Okay, not the most rounded line. But we're starting to get a feel for it. So let's get that playback going. There you go. You can start to see it taken off there. All right. So now the next one, since it's going against gravity, it's fighting gravity. So now it's going to start slowing down because it's up in the air. So the next drawing that I create, it's going to be a little closer together because it's not as it's move, not moving as fast. So I'm going to put it here. There we go. That's about where the can should be. Right, these are we're all kind of discovering where that drawing should be. And we'll clean this up later if we really want to on a new layer. So since it's picking up speed, it's not as far apart. See how far apart this is? Because it's going very fast. But now it's not going so fast, so they're closer together. The next one. 
going to be even closer because it lost even more speed. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Okay. This one's going to be pretty much right on top of it because it's barely lifting up anymore. It's got barely any, any energy left. But it's still moving forward a bit, right? So the more of these in-betweens we do, the more clear the animation becomes, the more smooth the animation becomes. And now that the can is going to start falling, so it's going to start picking up speed again. So it's going to go a little further. And then further again, because now it's really starting to lose speed. I'm going to use my space bar to move my stage over. And we're going to go further down. This time we're going further because it's going faster. And it's going to go faster. Now it's really motoring down. Actually, in this case, I could probably land it. Let's land it. Yeah, let's, let's completely land it. Should be about here, I'm guessing. See how it picks up speed at the end as it falls? Whew. And then maybe we'll just get it to sit properly somewhat. By now it actually should be changing in uh, perspective, but that's fine. Yeah, let's change the perspective. <laughs> Why not? Whoops. Yeah, it's gotten a little shorter too. That's not good. And I'm going to get it to hold F5. And that's my dog barking in the background. <laughs> so there you go. So there's some frame by frame animation for you. So as you saw, while I was animating, I was using the onion skin to see the drawing before and the drawing after. Okay, and you could see where the onion skin icon was way over there. It's that last arrow. You, could, you don't even see the title where it says onion skin, but it's the very last arrow way down there. Okay. Um, here, if you notice, this is where the onion skin starts and there's where the onion skin ends. See the blue and the green? So we can actually adjust those so that the onion skin sees more or sees less. So you can see how handy the onion skins are. You can also see how all my frames are done on twos. So I draw, skip a frame, draw, skip a frame, draw, skip a frame. That's what we call animating on twos. Okay, but you'll see on frame 15, I actually held that drawing just a little bit longer. Okay, sometimes we'll do that. Usually we'll, we'll sneak a little drawing in there just to keep it moving so it's smoother. Okay, but now you can see how to control those onion skins and you can see how useful those are. You saw I, I use them all the time. So now that you saw some frame by frame drawn animation, you could see how tough it was, right? It does take practice and you can see it's sketchy. It's not the perfect drawings. We're trying to establish the motion, not the perfect drawing. Okay. Now let's try making a, a character that we can actually move like a puppet. Let's give that a try. 
Okay, so this time we're going to animate using a puppet. So we're going to build the pip puppet first. Okay, this is called rigged animation, and it's not that hard as long as you keep it simple. Stick with that rule. So we have our two layers here, our background and our animation layer. And I have somewhat of a background here that I've drawn in. And on my animation layer, I'm going to add a blank frame. So the hotkey is F7. So you could right click, convert to a blank frame, convert to a blank keyframe. And you can see F7 is listed there. Okay, so now I have a blank drawing. I'm going to select now the oval tool. If you're not seeing it, you might be seeing the rectangle tool. So you can click and hold on that and go down to an oval tool. And I'm going to make like a glob, uh, let me, or a blob, sorry. Um, let me make sure my color is fill is blue, tool properties, and my outline is going to be black. So oval, blue, and I'm just going to draw a little circle here. So I click and drag. And then I'm going to click and hold on the select tool and go to my sub select tool. And this sub select tool, if I click once, I'll get these dots around the circle. And I'm going to click once on one of them, just click and let go. Then I'm going to click and drag. And that's going to be my character's leg. Click, click and drag. That'll be the other leg. Click. And this will be the neck. This will be his nose. And you can also work with these beziers. That'll be his nose. This will be his head. That'll be my character. Right? Just a a blob of some kind. So this is what the shape of the initial character is going to be. Now we're going to turn this shape into a puppet. And with that, we use this push pin here. It's called an asset warp tool. Click the push pin and we're going to put little control points. So I'm going to control this leg. Okay, wait for it. Sometimes it takes a second to kick, click in. Try it again. His leg, there we go. The center, we want to control the center. His other leg, the center of the character. You don't want to use too many points. Let's control his nose, top of his head, and the back of his head. And that's enough. You really don't want to have too many more. So right now, both the background and the animation are only being shown for one frame. And we're going to want to animate it over, you know, something like 25, 30 frames. So let's, let's extend the hold. Let's make the animation last until frame 30. So I'm going to click on frame 30 on the animation layer. You can right click and insert frame F5. And that will extend that drawing all the way across. You'll notice now I don't have a background. Okay, so let's get the background because the background is only showing for one frame and the animation is shown for 30 frames. So let's get the background to hold. Let's go a little bit longer. Let's go to frame. Oh no, let's go 30. We'll match it. Right click. F5 works. Insert frame. There you go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get this character to kind of jump across. So I'm going to have the character stand still for, let's say, about five frames. Okay. So at this stage, I'm going to make, a, I'm going to duplicate that key. And this time I'm going to use convert to keyframe, F6. So you're noticing that I'm using three function keys. F5 to extend a hold, F6 to duplicate a, a, a pose, and F7 to create a blank pose. Okay, The blank pose we use for the drawn frame by frame, in this particular uh, animation, we're going to be sticking with F6. Okay, 
So we have the, our beginning pose and we duplicated that pose. Now we're going to do this pose to pose animation. So this is where he's going to start and he's going to jump, right? So before the character jumps, we're going to have the character lean back. So let's go to frame 10. Actually, no, let's go to frame 11. And we're going to hit F6 again. And that's going to be pose to pose. This is going to be the leaning back. So how far do you want this character to lean back? So I want this. So I'm just going to grab with the same tool, with that same push pin tool. I'm now grabbing these points. Okay, let's, let's get this character really leaning back. Okay, and in fact, maybe even bring the leg up a bit. Okay, so the character is going to go back. See that? So now let's in between that a bit. So I'm going to go halfway between. One, two, one, two. You know what? This should have been... Let's go to frame 12. So I'm going to insert a key, a key here. Or a, Sorry, insert a frame. I'm going to make this longer because right now this is only uh, five frames. Let's see, what do we got here? One, two, one, two. Yeah. Oh, no, that's right. That's right. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to insert two more. So I'm going to hit F5 twice. F5, and you'll see it pushes this. F5. So that we can get it to lean back slowly. There, that's better. So let's pose halfway between those two keys. Okay, so I'm going to hit F6 to duplicate that pose. We're going to turn on our onion skins because this will guide us between this pose and this pose. Sorry, this pose and this pose. There you go. <laughs> So we're doing this middle pose between these two poses. And you can see the ghost image here. So that's as far back. We want to go halfway between where it is and where it's going. So this is the halfway point. OK, and you can see now it's going to lean back. See if we want to play back. Let's extend our background as well. F5, F5. So it matches. We're going to turn on our, our loop playback. Make sure that this blue matches the whole thing. Hit play. Okay, and it's a little choppy, and that's okay. And that's why I gave extra frames in here, because we're going to smooth it over. Right now, we're just getting in the poses. OK, so now let's go in between those two poses. Again, the onion skins are on. And again, I'm still using the push pin tool. We're going to F6 to add a frame. Remember to do that. Otherwise, you're going to modify the frame before. So we're going to go halfway between. Let's play that back, and you'll see it's going to start to start to get start to get a little bit smoother. Okay, now let's do the same between these two, right? Because we want we want a, a drawing or a pose every two frames. That's what starts to make it smooth. So I'm going to insert a frame, and we're going to do another pose between this one and that one. This time I'm going to get that leg up. So the leg's going to kind of come up at the last second. See how the leg's way up here in, in this pose here? 
He's going to kind of kick that leg up. <laughs> Let's see. There you go. See, the leg kind of comes up a little late, which is kind of cool. That builds up the energy. And it's still a little choppy, but you can see it's starting to come to life, right? And this is actually how we animate. If we want it to be a little smoother, we would add more in-betweens in here. But that's okay. We're, we're really we're in a good spot here. Now, I want him to hold this pose with his leg up. I want to build suspense before the jump. So instead of going two, let's go four. One, two, three. Right, so including the pose. One, two, three, four. And the, and the frame after is where the character is going to launch. And if you want him to hold longer, you can. We can we can really get him to hold long. You know, build up that anticipation. Hit an F6. And there goes my dog. <laughs> so now, at this point, the character is going to spring forward. Okay, so when the character is moving fast, you don't have to be as close as, as I am here. See how close these drawings are to each other? This one's going to be f moving fast, so we don't need as as close. So I'm going to go a far distance. And I'm going to leave his little his back leg behind. It's kind of it's kind of stuck. See what that pose looks like. I'm not sure. That's a little bit better. It's a little bit better. I want to kind of leave his, his little sticky part here. All right, so let's see what that looks like. So he leans back. Pew, right, you can see how he's going to fly, right? There, it has looking a bit better. now that it's moving fast it's gonna go not as far this time it's gonna be starting to slow down against gravity so in my next pose I'm gonna have the leg go a little bit further the nose go a little bit further the neck go a little bit further I hope that's my neck <laughs> just keep track of these the, the center point going a little bit further the head going a little bit further back of the head Going a bit further, further, and now the leg's gonna catch up. Woohoo! Okay, so now that's gonna be his pose catching up. Let's play that. Okay, and at this stage, we're gonna have the back leg kind of kick up a bit. So F6. Move these two forward a bit, start to plateau, and now it's starting to slow down. So don't go too far apart. When it's moving fast, you go far apart. Now it's starting to slow down, so I'm actually keeping it close together. And this time the leg is going to kick up a bit. Let's see if I can get this leg to kick up. It's a bit wide there. Trying to rem trying to remember what the volume of the character is. Let's get him a little skinnier here. Okay, so now he's going to start to fall. So he's going to tip F6. Now he's going to start falling down you might want to once in a while check on the arc that the character is taking right 
you could actually check that with this onion skins. So you can kind of see the arc that it's going to take. And we'll get the character to land. F6. Um. Actually, yeah, let's do a proper, let's just land it completely. Because it's going f fast because it's falling, right? So we can go further apart. See, close together, further apart. These two are a little closer. These two are a little further. That means these ones are faster. These two are slower. And it's kind of slower at the top because of gravity. So the character is going to hit the ground. Let's curl that leg up a bit. And then in the last pose, I'm just going to bring that leg down. Clunk. And I could, in that second last pose, have his nose go forward a bit. So it's kind of, he's going to relax back down. Yeah, so there's a bit of weight going forward, and then it's going to settle down. Now it's really cutting short. I don't really get to see that last pose. So let's hold this longer. Let's hold the whole thing to frame 50. So F5, F5. And let's extend our loop. Now we could slow, slow down that landing if we really want to. By extending this, Let's go F5, F5 on the second last frame. Add another key, and we can in between those two poses. And that'll just make it a little bit smoother. There you go. Yeah, it's fun animating with a rig. It's a little different. It takes a little bit of practice. That's why you want to keep these shapes simple. Hope you have fun. That was pretty fun. Hopefully you gave that a bit of a try and hopefully it wasn't too tough. But while you're working, do remember those tips. Keep it simple. You could see how tough it is even to draw a can or even to animate a puppet. Right? It's still tough, so we want to keep it simple, especially when we're learning. We want to save often so we're not losing our work. Right? So maybe every four or five frames, quickly file save. Quickly just save it. Remember, every time I drew a new drawing, it, when I was doing frame by frame animation, I, I used F7 to add a new frame and then I drew on that frame. You saw me do that a lot. And remember the animation principles that we talked to, pose to pose. Start with where it starts and where it ends, what the action is in the middle, and then in between it. Do all the drawings in between to make it more smooth. Okay, it's a lot of work, you saw that. But once you understand that process, it becomes just a matter of time and matter of practice, right? The procedure actually makes sense. Think about weight and volume, so I'm trying to keep it the same sh size, the same volume, so it's not shrinking and getting larger. I was trying to keep it, so even if I was stretching it, it would come thinner. If I was squashing it, it would come wider, right? So we're thinking about volume, we're thinking about weight, so I had to lean back, lean that can back before launching it. And remember, like the background, if I wanted to hold the background for a longer amount of time, I used F5. So I went to the 50, uh, frame 55 on the background layer, clicked on that frame, and hit F5. And that held my background longer. So remember these tips. They'll definitely help you. 
I hope this video was helpful. I know it's a lot of work. Give it a try though. You'll find it very rewarding as it comes to life. Enjoy.